to finish up uh, by talking about uh, uh, ORCID. Uh, and I particularly just wanted to talk about uh, publishers, uh, publishers using uh, ORCID. So um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, ORCID's reaching a, a great milestone and we'll soon have over a million <coughs> uh, researcher IDs and, uh, and profiles. As Carl just mentioned, uh, Crossref already has some functionality that enables uh, researchers to add publications to their, to their profiles. Um, and a key project that we're going to be working on over the next uh, few months is uh, pushing uh, publication information into researchers' uh, uh, profiles. Because right now it has to be initiated by the, by the researcher. We're going to try to uh, tie it into the publishing workflow. Uh, more uh, more closely, so we're just just starting the the process of doing that. <clears throat> so I want to um, say to publishers here, if you're not already a member, uh, please look at becoming a member. And uh, when you look at uh, becoming a member, uh, the main activities uh, I'll just want to cover now is that uh, publishers <coughs> are largely requesting who the ones who've joined and integrated so far are requesting ORCID IDs. Uh, at manuscript submission time, and then the ID becomes part of the metadata, and then it flows through into Crossref deposits, out into things like PubMed and 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 Scopus, and then it actually can then be displayed uh, on uh, the publications as as well to uniquely identify uh, those uh, those researchers. And then it enables then obviously to. The, the ORCID uh, ID itself is a, is a link, and that can link off to the ORCID profile, which then leads to more information about, um, uh, about, the, uh, about the researcher. So there's already been quite a lot of engagement from the, the publishing community, both from, uh, from the publishers listed here and, and more, and also those organizations that are both societies and, and uh, publishers. And um, the main manuscript submission systems uh, have uh, all have uh, ORCID functionality uh, integrated, uh, integrated as well. So there's really no excuse not to uh, get started. Um, <clears throat> so uh, a key thing, though, is that uh, uh, when uh, 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 the uh, is authentication. So uh, when uh, never let an author type in a type in an ID, right? So um, the, uh, uh, the publisher systems can actually connect and check with ORCID and verify that something's a valid um, uh, uh, ORCID ID. But then also, <coughs> if uh, as might be the case now, many of the researchers, the, the authors, aren't going to have their ORCID IDs yet. And so publishers can also encourage them to do that and uh, uh, make it uh, more seamless for the researchers to go off and claim their ID and get, and get their ID and then again have it flow through uh, to uh, Crossref. Uh, I think the, the other key thing, though, is that publishers can use um, uh, the ORCID then throughout their systems. So it can be used actually for signing on to, the, to, the, to their systems, but it can also be then uh, linked in with uh, all their internal systems. And there's uh, discussion, interesting discussions going on uh, now and some collaboration between ORCID and CASRI about uh, acknowledging uh, peer review um, activities so that uh, it's it's this idea of the contributor that that researchers are not just just authors but they're contributing in lots of different ways and and ORCID can start to um, uh, give credit for that and and help and help that uh, happen. So there's lots of uh, useful information on the uh, on the ORCID uh, ORCID website. Uh, so I encourage you to go there and look, and then you'll be hearing uh, very very shortly uh, about the. Uh, the millionth uh, ORCID ID being uh, registered. So that's it. Um, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>